Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio. Today, we are talking about the fact that um, that Denis Villeneuve has seemed to change his mind on Dune's day and date release. Um, on September 12th, uh, this article from Screen Rant came out that uh, basically claims uh, Dune director supports dual HBO Max and theatrical release. Dune director Denis Villeneuve is okay with the film's simultaneous release in theaters and on HBO Max. He stresses that the biggest enemy is COVID-19. So let's let's dig a little deeper into this. Uh, recently, in an interview with Deadline, Villeneuve voiced his approval for Dune's day and date release. The director stated what, when he had to delay the film last year, he was really crushed as it felt like he was betraying his audience. But at that time, postponing the movie was important for the safety of people. However, now, since vaccines are in full swing, it's a sound decision to put the film out for the viewers. Villeneuve doesn't want to unnecessarily delay the movie, as he feels that fans have waited for Dune long enough. Hence, he is okay with the movie launching in theaters globally and on HBO Max. And here is what he had to say, quote... The good news is, is that the good news is that it's going to be released on Earth and on Earth in theaters and in the United States. It's going to be it's going to be day and date. The enemy right now is the pandemic. It's it is very difficult for theater owners and it's very difficult for everybody. And I did feel with Legendary that it was time to go out. Um, we had postponed the movie for a year due to safety. Now, because vaccinations have advanced, it's safe enough to put the movie in the world. Last year, when we decided to postpone, I understood why. It was about safety. I was sad because I thought I was abandoning people. There was a joy when a new movie is coming out, but it's time to hit the road. End quote. You know, is this the, o is this the only reason why uh, Dune is being released day and date? Well, if you look at the total length of this video, you know that personally, I don't think so. So, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's go back, uh, just a couple of months and see, uh, what Villeneuve had to say then. So now we've traveled back to August of 2021, uh, with this article coming out on the 22nd of August, and that is Denis Villeneuve keeps missing the point of Dune's HBO Max release. Dune finally hits theaters in HBO Max in October 2021, but director Denis Villeneuve has a problem with the streaming release plan. Funny how, what, we're only talking two or three weeks, he all of a sudden changed his mind? Uh, Denis Villeneuve's epic adaptation of Dune will finally make its way to audiences this fall, and despite the director's issue with Warner Brothers' HBO Max, HBO Max distribution agreement, this is the best option for the sci-fi blockbuster because the pandemic still looms large over the project's legacy. Frank Herbert's famously dense science fiction classic has been brought from novel to film before, most, inf most infamously Dave David Lynch's Dune in 84, but contemporary sci-fi st um, stalwart du Villeneuve decided the time was right to helm a remake circa 2016. After cutting his teeth on similar large-scale endeavors like Arrival in Blade Runner 2049, Villeneuve and company threw everything they had into a much maligned production of equally tricky source material, eventually opting to tackle the novel in two halves. But an already complicated project was soon thrown another cur curveball, the coronavirus pandemic. As theaters closed their doors en masse during the early stages of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic in 2020, studios and distributors had to make drastic decisions to help navigate the devastating circumstances for the film industry. One such decision came from Warner Brothers, who after piloting a simultaneous release model with Wonder Woman 1984, decided that Warner Brothers' 2021 release slate would arrive on HBO Max the same day as in theaters. With Dune already delayed to 2021 as a result of the pandemic, the news irked Villeneuve, among others, who felt that who felt their films as movie going experience and box office figures would be irreparably damaged by the uh, by the unusual distribution model indeed Villeneuve's Dune looks to be de de designed for the theater experience something Denis previously cited in an interview with Total Films saying quote it's a movie that's been made as a tribute to the big screen experience but his comments in the interview ignore an unfortunate reality of the pandemic era uh, much much has been made much has been made of finding a sense of normalcy during these unprecedented ongoing times 
For some seeking quote-unquote normalcy is a key part of the, of the desire to return to theaters, but for others, venturing into crowded social situations still poses a real and dangerous health risk. Studios, meanwhile, still have material to release and overheads to dent. And after months of delaying already delayed projects, the deal between Warners and HBO Max seemed as good as a compromise as the two sides could hope for. Folks who prefer the theatrical experience would be given the chance to participate in that way at their own risk, and folks who feel uncomfortable with that option for one reason or another have the stay-at-home option available to them. Certainly, it's not traditional, nor does it satisfy filmmakers' desire to preserve the rich communal phenomenon of moviegoing or the ability to leverage cutting-edge audiovisual technology to the film's advantage, but in, but in this day and age, sacrifices are being made left and right. At least this compromise is relatively benign in the grand scheme of things. Da, 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 da. This sentiment does not, however, erase Villeneuve's case outright. Dune is an epic in every sense of the word. It boasts an all-star cast, headlined by Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, and Oscar Isaac. The visual effects appear massive in the trailer, rendered in the immersive photorealism by DP uh, Greg, Fraser, Greg Fraser's cinematography. Eric Roth co-wrote this adaptation, himself no stranger to adapting large, sprawling narrative for the screen, having done so with the American epic and 1994 Best Picture winner Forrest Gump. The IP has an extensive genealogy explored in-depth with movies by Mikey on his eponymous YouTube show, blah blah blah, who cares. Uh, to engage with this behemoth, with this behemoth in, any ma in any manner short of theatrical feels, understandably insufficient, as Denise said in the aforementioned interview, quote, Frankly, to watch Dune on a television, the best way I can compare it is to drive a speedboat in your bathtub. In your bathtub, for me, it's ridiculous. End quote. Uh, perhaps Villeneuve suspects Warner Brothers' motivations to release Dune in such a manner aren't entirely out of concern for public health. If the studio has a bomb on its hands, Warner Brothers may try to liquidate it quickly and or quietly to cut to cut its losses. And it's possible it could believe Dune to, Doom to be such a bomb. After all, the 1984 version famously flopped, and Denis' previous outing, Blade Runner 2049, failed to recoup its budget at the box office. Please remember that for later. Uh, despite its critical brilliance, whatever the reason, Villeneuve will continue to, la to lament the fate of Dune, as moviegoers everywhere lament the compromises in their own lives during these tumultuous times. Okay, so they're basically they're basically you know saying you know it's it's only done it's only done because of COVID. But let's go back to two days prior to this article, and I remember this making a shit show back then. Was that a uh, Dune director requested no screener links are sent out to press, and I do I do remember this being quite the shit show in the uh, YouTube movie sphere. Um, Denis Villeneuve explicitly insisted that no viewing links be, be be set out prior to Dune's release, quote, so that the film can only be seen on the big screen. Um, with his upcoming sci-fi epic Dune representing one, one of the most anticipated films of 2021, director Denis Villeneuve has, has revealed the lengths he has gone to in order to ensure the film is viewed on a big screen. Based on Frank Herbert's classic novel from 1965, Dune follows Timothy Chalamet as Paul Atreides, whose family accepts stewardship over the desolate planet Arrakis, the only source, the only source of the life-extending drug Melange, also known as the Spice. Villeneuve's representation, Re Villeneuve's film represents the third attempt to adapt Her Herbert's novel after the first effort by Alejandro uh, Jodorowsky in the 1970s failed to get off the ground. I believe that was the 14-hour version, and David Lynch's 1984 was poorly received and bombed at the box office. Originally scheduled to release in November 2020, Dune was delayed several times, initially as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, but also in order to avoid conflicting with the release of the much-delayed James Bond, James Bond film No Time to Die. With the delay came the announcement that, as, as with all Warner Brothers films released in 2021, Dune would be simultaneously released in both theaters and on Warner Brothers' streaming service HBO Max for ad-free subscribers, a development that Villeneuve has been highly critical of. Um, Villeneuve has been incredibly vocal in his belief that Dune should be viewed in a theater on a big screen, an opinion he, he that he doubled down on during an interview with La Presse. 
uh, speaking to the digital newspaper on August 18th, two weeks prior to Dune's premiere at the Venice Film Festival on September 3rd, Villeneuve revealed that he had gone so far as to, quote, insist that no one receives a viewing link so that the film can only be seen on the big screen, end quote. Uh, the director has been highly critical of the recent move uh, to, uh, has been, uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here again. The director has been highly critical of the recent move towards hybrid to uh, towards hybrid releases of films. That fucking typo is it's, it's the typo that was tripping me up. Um, including Dune's release on HBO Max, which he compared to driving a speedboat in a bathtub. Uh, the director has also been vocal in his support for Scarlett Johansson's lawsuit against Disney over the hybrid release of Black Widow, and that is something that we have already covered in depth on this channel. Uh, however, Villeneuve did emphasize to La Presse that Warner Brothers' decision to, to, regarding the stream release, quote, happened when no one had seen the film yet. Once they saw it, I felt a change in attitude, end quote. He noted that since then, the studio has been supportive in the marketing campaign for the film, and that is part of what afforded the director the ability to veto digital screeners. Um, Villeneuve is known for crafting visually stunning films with the likes of Arrival, Sicario, and Blade Runner 2049, with Dune, the director has been afforded the opportunity to take this to a whole new level by creating stunning vistas. As such, it makes sense why the director would prefer for his film to be seen on the big screen in order to fully appreciate the cinematography on display. Uh, there's a lot more to a movie than just pretty pictures. Um, believe me, watch any... Um, oh, who's the, who's the director for, for The Thin Red Line? I can't, I can't remember his name right now, but he was a, uh, he was a former photographer, but seriously... If, if the movie is only selling you on its cinematography, run like hell. Um, he has been a strong proponent of movie theaters as a place in order to do this, so it's good to hear that the director was granted his wish when it came to viewing links, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that said, considering the current rise in COVID-19 cases involving the Delta variant, as well as the, consequ as well as the consequent decline in theater attendance, again, we covered this already with the movie theaters versus streaming debate. Uh, theater attendance was in decline for 20 years prior to COVID hitting. So the fact that theater attendance is declining again shouldn't shock anybody. Uh, it also makes sense why studios like Warner Brothers would wish to offer audiences a choice of whether to watch the film, their film in theaters or from the safety of their homes. While artistic integrity is important, it shouldn't come at the cost of people's safety during these times. So far, Dune looks to be a visual spectacle, but whether or not this delivers is another matter entirely, and will be a matter to be decided when the film releases on October 22nd. Okay, so if you believe these two articles from August 2021, you would think that they're only they're only doing it because 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 of COVID. However, if you've been following me for a while, uh, you know that I don't think that these things are so black and white. So let's look at the first possibility as to why Denis Villeneuve is okay with the simultaneous release now, whereas he wasn't just a few weeks prior. In order to understand this change of heart, first, we must take a trip back in time. And that is Huey Lewis and the News. And I know secretly you want to applaud them. And I will not personally shame you for it if you applaud them from the comfort of your own home or your car or wherever the hell you're listening to this from. But anyway, I've dragged it on long enough. So uh, let's go back to uh, when Dune kept getting delayed. Uh, with this article from The Verge here, uh, Dune delayed to October 1st, 2021. Um, ba 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 ba. Uh, Dune is the latest movie to get pushed back to 2021, following a number of, of other highly anticipated blockbuster films, including Black Widow and No Time to Die. 
It'll now be released on October 1st, 2021, nearly a full year after the original December 18th release date, Collider and The Wrap have reported. The Dune delay comes after Regal and Cineworld announced that it would be shuttering all of its theaters in the US and the UK. See, I completely forgot about that, but yeah, I, uh, yeah, fall. Following the delay of No Time to Die last week, I remember that because they they were holding out for that movie, and they and yeah, Regal and Cineworld basically just came out and said, "Look, if all the major blockbusters are getting pushed back into 2021, fuck it, we're just going to shut down and reopen. Then why why are we going to bother staying open at this point?" Uh, with more and more major films that were originally scheduled to debut this fall moving to 2021, due to concerns over the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, there's simply not enough new content for theaters to show right now. Dune's changed release date isn't too much of a surprise, as studios are continuously trying to figure out the best time to release their biggest movies. Warner Bros. already delayed another of its movies, Wonder Woman 1984, from October to December 25th. Industry insiders assumed that with Wonder Woman 1984 moving to December, the same month that Dune was originally scheduled to be released, Denis Villeneuve's adaptation would likely be punted to 2021. That October 1st date is a bit confusing, though, given that Warner Bros. has already delayed a major 2020 film to that date. Robert Pattinson's The Batman is already slated for that for the same day, meaning it's likely that one or two Warner Bros. blockbusters will be shifted again. Uh, Warner Bros. is giving itself wiggle room, though. When the studio premiered the first Dune trailer in September, the film's release date was specifically left out. All the trailer said is, coming to theaters. It seemed like Warner Brothers learned from its experience with Christopher Nolan's Tenet, which was delayed a few times leading to, to marketing kerfuffles. Keeping dates out of trailers isn't the only thing Warner Brothers learned from Tenet. The studio released the film internationally on August 26th, before bringing it to the United States and China on September 3rd. The film was only was only able to play in select cities and was kept out of key markets like Los Angeles and New York City. Tenet has only generated $36.1 million stateside, but the film has seen much bigger success internationally, racking up more than $203 million. While that doesn't make the film profitable for Warner Brothers, it may be enough incentive to keep Wonder Woman 1984 in the December 25th spot while moving Dune to a period when more people may be able to get to, to a movie theater. Uh, Warner Brothers isn't the only studio in this position, uh, isn't, uh, isn't the only studio in this position either. Disney has delayed many of its big films, including Black Widow. Scarlett Johansson's standalone Marvel movie will now open on May 7th, 2021. Well, as we know, it, that didn't happen. It debuted in July, but to be fair, this article was written back in October of 2020. Um, instead of November 6, 2020, this this makes 2020 the first year without a Marvel Cinematic Universe film since 2009. As part of the delay, other Marvel titles like Shang Chi and The Eternals are also delayed. Meanwhile, West Side Story and The King's Man, two two films Disney inherited from Zack Snyder and 20, uh, 21st Century Fox, also moved to 2021. Is it fair to say that 2020 is mostly a watch for film studios? Sure. Only a handful of major blockbusters still remain on the theatrical schedule for this year, including Wonder Woman 1984, Free Guy, which was delayed to 2021, Pixar's Soul, I believe that was, I believe that was released to Disney Plus only, uh, and Death on the Nile, that was pushed back to 2021. Uh, some films have performed well via digital rental platforms. Trolls World Tour allegedly made $100 million for Universal, but for the most part, executives are hopeful 2021 will be a much better year. So that was Dune's first major delay, is they're going to delay it by over a year. And then we have this article, again from The Verge, written in June of 2021. Uh, Dune release date has been delayed yet again. The movie is now planned to hit theaters and HBO Max October 22nd. Um, Denis Villeneuve's Dune was among the big 2020 movies that saw its release date delayed due to the coronavirus pandemic. After being moved to October 1st, Dune's release has been pushed back yet again, this time to October 22nd. Var Variety reports. Uh, the move was one of several uh, one of several releases Warner Bros. rescheduled, with the Clint Eastwood directed Cry Macho moved to September 17th, and The Many Saints of Newark, a prequel to The Sopranos, moved to October 1st. The adaptation of the 1965 Frank Herbert sci-fi classic has an all-star cast, blah 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 blah, um, with uh, Timothy Chalamet, Rebecca Ferguson, Oscar Isaac, Stellan Skarsgård, Zendaya, Jason Momoa, Josh Brolin, Dave Bautista, and Javier Bardem. 
Uh, Dune is slated to be the first of two movies based on the book. The movie coming out in October, at this point anyway, will cover the massive novel's first half, while a second as yet unnamed movie is planned to cover the rest. There was also an HBO Max prequel series in the works. Yes, I believe it was following the um, the Jesuit, uh, and more specifically Lady Jessica, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Dune is among the uh, is among the upcoming Warner Brothers movies slated to debut on HBO Max at the same time it hits theaters. That controversial decision announced by Warner Brothers in December, this is December of 2020, didn't sit well with many in the industry, including Villeneuve. He blasted the studio's then parent company AT and T, saying in a Variety op-ed that it had quote hijacked one of the most respectable and important studios in film history. End quote. AT&T announced in May that it would spin off its Warner Media business to merge with TV company Discovery. Dune is still scheduled to have its world premiere at the Venice International Film Festival in September. Okay, so you think that this is that that this is all in good that, you know, okay, you know, the 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 date has been delayed, you know, to now to October 22nd. Well, uh, according to the Screen Rant article released on September 15th, 2021, uh, Dune was almost delayed to 2022. Uh, Dune was almost delayed into 2022 and out and out of Warner Brothers' HBO Max window, but Denis Villeneuve and shareholders didn't want to delay the movie again. Okay, so let, let's 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 dig into this now. Uh, Denis Villeneuve's Dune was almost delayed into 2022. The highly anticipated adaptation of Frank Herbert's novel is currently slated for release on October 22nd. The third date is occupied on the release calendar. Dune was originally scheduled to hit theaters in December 2020, but was delayed due to the ongoing pandemic in October 2021. Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers originally planned to release it on October 1st, but moved the film back three weeks. Now Dune has premiered at the, Ven at the Venice International Film Festival, and a lucky few critics and fans have gone to, have gone to feast their eyes on Bill News' latest spectacle. Dune will follow Timothy Chalamet's Paul Atreides, son of Oscar Isaac's Duke Leto, and Rebecca Ferguson's Lady Jessica. When House Atreides is called to take stewardship over the planet Arrakis, a.k.a. Dune, Duke, Le uh, Duke Leto uh, knows a trap is being set for him, but sees no way out of it. The movie will adapt the first half of Herbert's novel, with Villeneuve set to complete the story in a sequel. However, that sequel is contingent on a number of factors, including Dune's performance on HBO Max, and we will get to that in just a minute. Uh, a new report indicated that Warner Bros. may favor HBO Max streaming numbers over box office in this situation, but at one point, co-financier Legendary Studios wanted to avoid the situation entirely. According to Variety, Legendary was given the option of delaying Dune into 2022. This would put the movie outside HBO Ma Warner Bros. HBO Max window and give it an exclusive theatrical release. However, Villeneuve and shareholders felt that the movie had been delayed enough and wanted to release it as soon as possible. This decision was reportedly made in August, indicating that discussions had been ongoing about Dune's release plan throughout 2021. So, huh... The decision was made in August when he still was against the idea of releasing day and date. Um, with so much writing on the release of Dune, including a big budget sequel and potential spinoffs, including one Dune show already in development for HBO Max, the debate around whether or not to release the film exclusively in theaters is a contentious one. Still, the box office has not yet completely recovered from its 2020 lows, even if numbers are on the rise, making releasing Dune in theaters a tricky prospect. Major numbers are no longer guaranteed, even with an exclusive theatrical release. In fact, it almost seems as if Dune could thrive on streaming as much as it could in theaters. Getting the film in front of as many people as possible should be the ultimate goal, and HBO Max will do just that, priming audiences for a potential sequel that will dive even deeper into Herbert's complex and complicated world. The report is also a relief for die-hard Dune fans who have been waiting long enough to see a true adaptation of the source material on the big screen, with just under a month to go until the film's release. Villeneuve's movie is shaping up to be one of, if not the biggest, release of the fall season. Okay, so one could believe that, you know, the fact that this movie just kept getting delayed, 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 you know, the, you know, Denis Villeneuve and along with Warner Brothers and Legendary finally caved to the pressure and just basically said, look, we have to release this movie. 
uh, because in fact, you know, look at what's happening right now with, with Top Gun Maverick and the fact that Paramount pushed that back yet again to May of 2022. As I said in my video on that topic, is that the problem with delaying movies until, you know, that way you could release it in the quote unquote perfect time, is that that perfect time may have already come and gone. So maybe Warner Brothers, Denis Villeneuve, and Legendary wanted to avoid the same fate. So now let's take a look at this idea of a potential sequel and we're going to start with uh, this article here published on September 13th of 2021. Uh, Warner Brothers didn't let Dune director film parts one and two back to back. Director Denis Villeneuve wanted to film both uh, Dune part one and part two simultaneously, but Warner Brothers didn't, didn't let him green lighting only the first. Uh, director Denis Villeneuve wanted to film Dune Part 1 and Part 2 back to back, but Warner Brothers didn't let him. The director's upcoming adaptation of Frank Herbert's science fiction classic will only adapt the first half of the novel, leaving a second part up in the air. The dense tome is known for its complex world and intricate world building, and Villeneuve felt that he could only do the source material justice by splitting the story into two parts. But what they're failing to mention is that Dune actually started as a pulp. Uh, I believe it was published in a few issues of a magazine, then it was collected and expanded upon uh, into a novel. I do know that much, I just don't remember uh, what magazine it was published in. Um, uh, Timothy Chalamet will star as Paul Atreides in the upcoming film, heir to, to House Atreides, and future Messiah who, who, who is set to change the galaxy forever. Uh, the film also features Oscar Isaac, Rebecca Ferguson, Zendaya, Josh Brolin, Javier Bardem, Dave Bautista, Jason Momoa, and Stellan Skarsgård. Uh, anyone who knows um, Dune knows that Paul Atreides is actually not this Jesus Christ figure that they're hyping him up to be in this, you know, in, in the in this first movie. If you've actually, you know, read the the other books, the the sequel books, but uh, I'm getting a little too ahead of myself here. Uh, Dune is set to release in theaters and on HBO Max the same day. Part of Warner Brothers' plan to debut the, their entire 2021 slate on the streamer. The controversial decision led to much backlash in the industry, including from Villeneuve himself. The director has been very vocal about his wish that audiences see Dune on the largest screen where possible, and this desire is seemingly intertwined with his plans for a second film. The only thing that could prevent Dune Part 2 from being made is terrible box office numbers, but Villeneuve hoped to not even worry about that in the first place. Speaking to Variety, the director revealed that he tried to shoot Dune, Dune Part 1 and Part 2 back to back. Villeneuve said this didn't happen for several reasons. Although he, di although he didn't go into what, what those reasons were, this led him to putting all he could in the first movie in the hopes that audiences would respond to it, leading Warner Bros. to greenlight the sequel. And here is what Villeneuve said, quote, I wanted at the beginning to do two parts simultaneously. For several reasons, it didn't happen, and I agreed to the challenge of making part one and then wait to see if the movie rings enough enthusiasm. As I was, do as I was doing the first part, I really put all my passion into it in case it would be the only one, but I'm optimistic." End quote. Of course, filming Dune and its sequel back-to-back -back likely would would uh, would assuage fans' fears that Villeneuve won't be able to complete Herbert's story, but the move is also indicative of Hollywood's more risk-averse behavior in recent years. Just over two decades ago, Peter Jackson convinced New Line Cinema to let him film all three Lord of the Rings films back-to-back, -back, resulting in one of the most successful and critically acclaimed film trilogies of all time. While it's hard to imagine what would have happened had Warner Brothers done this, it's safe to say that the risk could certainly have been worth the reward. Now, something that they're not bringing up here is that Peter Jackson originally was going to do Lord of the Rings in just two movies, but um, because he wanted to do a very faithful adaptation of the books, I don't remember who came up to him, I think it was a screenwriter, came up and said, wait a minute, aren't there three Lord of the Rings books? And that's how they did the three Lord of the, the three Lord of the Rings movies. But getting back to this comment here, um, uh, the movie is also indicative of Hollywood's more risk-averse behavior in recent years. Well, if you think about it, the 1984 adaptation of Doom Bomb, we we know that it's quite it's quite known. Um, and the only successful adaptation of Dune was on television. It was on it was on the Sci-Fi Channel back back in 2000. In fact, that was so successful that they actually made the follow-up series, Children of Dune. And yeah, they didn't do another follow-up since, but still, Dune was only successful on television 
not the big screen. So of course they don't want the, they don't want Dune parts one and two filming back to back in case if this is in, in case if this is just yet another bomb, an, a, yet another bomb in the works. Uh, Warner Bros. has already incited the ire of audiences and those in the industry, both for their aforementioned streaming decision and for their mishandling of Zack Snyder's DCEU movies. Dune has major franchise potential, and that could be squandered by a lengthy wait between films, or even just by the fact that many, many may feel the movie is incomplete. Still, Villeneuve's latest is shaping up to be one of the biggest blockbusters of all season, and it seems likely that a second film could get the green light, especially once audiences finally get the chance to see the sweeping sci-fi epic. So, <coughs> God damn it, I've been talking for a while. Um, I did make mention that there there was a potential sequel. Well, if you just read that, there's, you know, nothing to really bestow upon. But if we jump over here, the art, another article published on the exact same day, uh, Dune 2 Greenlight reportedly depends on HBO Max performance. According to Warner Brothers Insiders, a sequel to the upcoming sci-fi epic Dune will only be greenlit if its predecessor succeeds on HBO Max. Uh, despite Dune Part 2 being pretty much confirmed by its director Denis Villeneuve, any sequel to the highly anticipated sci-fi epic Dune reportedly depends on how well Part 1 performs on HBO Max. After being postponed three times due to the ongoing pandemic, Dune is finally set to premiere simultaneously in theaters and on HBO Max on October 22nd. Starring some of Hollywood with all his actors, Zendaya, Timothy Chalamet, Oscar Isaac, we've already gone over that. The book adaptation is set to be one of 2021's biggest releases, set to, set to a score from legendary composer Hans Zimmer and co-written by Forrest Grump screenwriter Eric, Eric R. Roth. Dune is expected to score big at the global box office. Okay, and we've already gone into what the what the what the film follows basically the house of atreides going to arrakis because that's the only place where melange is created well we we've already covered that but here we go um as reported by variety hbo has yet to green light dune part two and will allegedly look to its predecessor's performance on hbo max before making that call ahead of dune part one's release a spin-off tv series called dune the sisterhood i knew it was going to fall the ben the ben Gesserit. You know, the, 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 that's what the sisterhood is. That was, that was the, uh, that was the Bene Gesserit. And I may have not actually said Bene Gesserit earlier, um, but it just, it just, it just came to me. So, uh, referring to that, to that, to that earlier mistake, oopsie, um, uh, don't care. I'm not going to go back and edit it out because I'm too lazy to do so. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, a spin-off TV series titled Dune the Sisterhood has already been set in motion at HBO Max, making the studio's decision to not stamp off on a sequel film even more confusing. But with the, e but with the even more con convoluted pandemic box office, it's hard to pinpoint what exactly Warner Brothers considers a success. Generally speaking, when a film fails to sell tickets in theaters, it also tends to go unwatched on streaming services. Regardless of Dune's financial success, its cast and director seem to have faith in the space epic, in addition to Villeneuve calling it his best film yet, Chalamet told, told reporters at the Venice Film Festival, quote, I hope we can do a second one, and said working on Dune Part 2 would be a dream. Um, Dune is just one of many pandemic-era films experiencing problems due to a hybrid release, i.e. Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow conundrum. Warner Brothers and HBO Max became the target of public outcry when they announced all of its 2021 films would have the same day, day theatrical and streaming premieres. Villeneuve himself was one of the most vocal critics against Warner Brothers, calling the decision a way to self-promote their streaming service. He further blasted the, company, apparent, uh, the company's apparent disregard for filmmakers, saying, There is absolutely no love for cinema, nor for the audience here, and later threatened a lawsuit. Shockingly, not only not not the only issue Villeneuve has faced working with HBO Max. In a recent interview, the director revealed that he tried to shoot Dune Part One and Part Two back to back, but was turned down by the studio, as we just reported a few minutes ago. Uh, a after getting a whopping 165 million dollar budget from Warner Brothers and facing a year's worth of delays, it's safe to say a lot is riding on the success of Dune. The film and its upcoming spin-off series have major franchise material, but there's a possibility audiences might not feel connected to a lengthy two and a half hour sci-fi flick, regardless of how impressive its visuals look. Again, there's a lot more to a movie than just pretty pictures. Uh, but regardless of its theatrical performance, HBO Max has a sizable subscriber base that will hopefully give Dune the numbers it needs to get Dune Part 2 greenlit. It'll be interesting to see how a film of this scale translates to pandemic-era box office, and if HBO Max will provide the push Dune needs to earn itself a big-budget sequel. Okay, so basically, you have one of two possibilities. 
basically you had it revealed in this article here that Denis Villeneuve threat, threatened a lawsuit against Warner Brothers. So probably to throw throw Doggy a bone, it was hey, you know, you want to do Dune Part Two? Okay, we'll let you do it depending on the success on, on the streaming side. Probably to calm them down, and that way you don't go to litigation like Scarlett Johansson did with Disney. Or you have another possibility where potentially the audience could be weaponized in the same way that they were with that hashtag release the Snyder Cut movement. You know, if enough people watch the first the first uh, Denis Villeneuve's Dune and like it, maybe they'll start a social media campaign to get the, to get the sequel off the ground, and therefore that's how a sequel gets off the ground. Again, we we don't know, but that may but that may be a possibility, and maybe what Denis Villeneuve is holding is holding out hope for. So now, guys, let's explore this reality, and this may actually be the simplest: is that was Dune an inevitable failure? Well, let's take a look here at this article published in July twenty third, twenty twenty one. Dune shows the lessons the lessons Denis Villeneuve learned from Blade Runner 2's failure. Okay, right off the bat, we're already acknowledging Blade Runner twenty forty nine was a failure. After the box office disappointment of Blade Runner 2049, Warner Brothers is changing its marketing strategy by showing off Dune's humor and action. Uh, Denis Villeneuve looks to be learning from Blade Runner 2049's failure by making Dune more accessible to a general audience. Oh, we'll get to that uh, by the end of this uh, by the end of this video here. Um, up until now, Dune's trailers have only had moderate success in generating excitement for the film outside the book's fans. But the newest trailer showed a change in marketing direction as the action set pieces and moments of comedy are on full display. It serves as a stark contrast to Villeneuve's previous film, Blade Runner 2049, which kept its story and action, heavy under, uh, action heavily under wraps in the marketing. Warner Brothers hit a, hit, hit a box office failure with Blade Runner 2049. The sequel to the sci-fi cult classic struggled to gain a wide audience this opening weekend due to its R rating and mysterious trailers. Well, right off the bat, that's bullshit because uh, the original Blade Runner was R rated. So, you know, you you can't really, you know, that's a that's a that's a non argument. Oh, oh, it didn't get oh oh it didn't get its uh, it didn't find a wide audience because of its R rating. Yeah, bullshit. Um, despite a high critic uh, despite a high critic rating, it wasn't enough to save the film. Dune, which adapts Frank Herbert's groundbreaking books, mirrors the Blade Runner franchise also being the next adaptation of a 1980s cult classic and releasing in October. Learning from its mistakes, however, Warner Brothers is getting the jump on marketing by revealing more to save the film from being another Blade Runner 2049. Moviegoers will immediately notice the humor and action spectacle that waits for them in the Dune trailer. Now, this was the Dune trailer released in July, and unfortunately, um, I could not find said trailer easily. Um, initially, some audiences were concerned with Dune's controversial first images released as they present a dark and somber tone, but people can tuck away those concerns as Villeneuve looks to bring a fun and complex sci-fi adventure to the screen, judging from the most recent trailer. Moments like Duke Leto asking Gurney to smile, or Duncan Idaho telling Paul that he lacks muscle may be, may be few, but it, hardly, but it hardly steers in the dark and serious world of Blade Runner. Likewise, while Blade Runner 2049 is, is widely regarded as one of the best sci-fi films made, uh, I would argue that with the first Blade Runner, not really with the second one. Uh, its lack of action slow pace heard at the box office with general audiences, Dune looks to expunge those concerns by putting the action front and center. The chart already teased large-scale battles between the two robber clans, House Atreides and the Harkonnens. Um, also, while it could have been something easy to hide, the trailers haven't been afraid to show off Dune's iconic sandworms. Uh, already, it seen, it, it, already, it teases some of the biggest set pieces from the book, where the main characters come into contact with these ship-swallowing beasts. Dune's iconography is synonymous with the sandworms, and not showing them would have been a mistake. Revealing them up front allows the movie to avoid mystery box marketing that can hurt a movie's reception if there's not enough to engage audiences not already familiar with the source material. Blade Runner 2049 wasn't afforded the, the, that luxury 
in the hopes of preserving the secrecy around its characters and their roles in the story, and in the end, the overall enigmatic marketing hurt it at the box office, Villeneuve made a smart decision to only adapt the first half of the book. While Dune is still a major box office risk, audiences not familiar with the books won't be overwhelmed with the amount of information tossed at them. The film can go at its own pace without being overly long or crammed in plot details in order to fit the whole story. With Dune reported to be 2 hours and 35 minutes long, Villeneuve is setting a reasonable runtime for audiences that may have been scared off by its previous films, 2 hours and 43 minutes. It's only an 8 minute difference, but for some moviegoers, anything closer to that 3 hour mark can be off-putting, and Villeneuve doesn't look to be making that mistake again. The team behind Dune is ramping up its marketing to avoid mistakes it made with Blade Runner 2049. Villeneuve is shaping up his latest film to be more for a general audience while still redefining the sci-fi movie genre. In hopes of a sequel, Dune is tossing its net wide to capture a, as, large an audi as large of an audience as, as it can opening weekend. Okay, let's actually examine Blade Runner 2049. You know, the long-anticipated sequel to, you know, Ridley Scott's Blade Runner. Uh, budget, uh, it's reported budget of $150 million and it only grossed $259,334,548 worldwide. Now, a rule of thumb to determine whether or not a movie is a, is a box office hit or a box office bomb, take the reported budget and you want to, and, and it, it's usually, you know, two and a half to three times the reported production budget is the true budget when you account for marketing. So the gross needs to be two and a half to three times whatever that production budget is in order to, in, in order to basically barely break even, ba break even at all. It probably needs to make closer to four times, four to five times to be considered profitable. But let's not just kick Blade Runner 2049. Let's truly examine Denis Villeneuve's filmography. And we're going to start with the movie that really put him on the map, which was 2010's On Sundays, uh, which I believe was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, had a reported budget of, of $6.8 million and only grossed $6,813,840 worldwide. So... The gross didn't even make its production budget back, despite the nomination uh, for Best Foreign Language Film, so that would be considered a box office bomb. Now let's take a look at Prisoners that starred uh, Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal, with a reported budget of $46 million and grossed $122,126,687 worldwide. If we apply the rule, that means that Prisoners while not a smash hit, it, ba it barely broke even, but it was not a box office bomb. Then we arrived to what was probably uh, Villeneuve's biggest film by that point, and that was Sicario with uh, Emily Blunt with a, with a reported budget of only $30 million, but grossing $85,120,254 worldwide. Potentially, this could have been a box office hit, but this movie was a real hit on home video, and this is, this is the movie that got Denis Villeneuve's name in the public consciousness. Not really on Sandiz, but it was just, it, on Sandiz was that one that really springboarded him. And then we get to Arrival with uh, uh, Amy Adams and uh, Jeremy Renner. Talk about a movie that really came out of nowhere. Uh, reported production budget of $47 million, and it grossed $203,388,185 worldwide. So again, applying that rule of thumb, this movie was profitable in theaters, unlike Blade Runner 2049, which immediately followed up Arrival. While it made more money than Arrival did, it also had a $150 million budget. Um, now, I do want to make note that there are some movies that, in his filmography that I did not mention, which was Enemy, um, Polytechnique, uh, and Maelstrom, uh, and that is largely because um, there are no reported production budgets, so all I can see are, is what the movie grossed. So there's there's no way to tell if it truly if the movie was truly a hit or if it was or if it was a complete disaster. 
but we're going to end off the video with this article here that was published on September 5th, 2021. Why Dune was always destined to be a divisive movie. This article's existence gave it away. Uh, Dune's first wave of reviews are largely positive, but the few detractors highlight predictable complaints given the filmmaker and source material. Uh, this is not a good sign for a movie that has a reported budget of $165 million. Uh, Dune's early reactions after its premiere at the Venice Film Festival were largely positive, including a six-minute standing ovation. That means absolutely nothing. Uh, but there were still a few key detractors and negative reviews. While those negative reviews hardly sour the overall reception, the response is what should have been expected from the material and filmmaker. Dune has occupied an interesting place as one of the most anticipated films in 2021 for a variety of reasons. The cast and crew all at the top of their game and the property promises the kind of big, epic sci-fi storytelling audiences love, but the delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic and divisive comments of director Denis Villeneuve about streaming versus the theatrical experience, which we have gone over, have overshadowed what may, what may have otherwise been a much more positive marketing cycle in the final stretch for the movie's release. Uh, after the first batch of reviews, they're, uh, they're almost all positive, with an 85% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which means absolutely nothing. Let's get that out of the way. And the handful of negative reviews all mention things that should have been expected, that should have been expected hangups from a portion of the audience all along. The combination of Denis Villeneuve and Frank Herbert's original source material are a pretty big indicator of the type of movie Dune is. And that's a movie that doesn't necessarily resonate with everyone. Again, not a good, not a good thing when you're talking about a movie with a reported budget of a $165 million. Uh, Villeneuve is, is one of the most talented directors working today, but his style isn't typical for mass appeal or more popcorn friendly movie going. His last two movies, Arrival and Blade Runner 2049, are prime examples of his approach. His focus is very tonal, relying on music and cinematography to tell the story over humor and exposition, which is more common for less risky low to mid budget movies like Arrival than for bigger block than for bigger budget blockbusters like Blade Runner 2049 or Dune. Combine that with Frank Herbert's notoriously dense and often labeled unfilmable source material, and the product might be exactly what fans want, but it may not be as accessible or achieve the same kind of broad appeal or box office draw enjoyed by franchises like the Marvel Cinematic Universe or Star Wars. This isn't inherently a problem as movies don't all have to appeal to everyone, but as seen with Bill Nibs Blade Runner 2049, this artistic approach to big budget movies doesn't always yield massive box office hauls, which is especially an issue in the post-pandemic box office landscape, especially when Dune is only half the story and a sequel rides on the performance of this first installment. Ultimately, a few bad reviews aren't going to hurt Dune, but the movie still needs a box office miracle when it arrives in theaters. So basically, here's, here's what I think happened. I think Denis Villeneuve was red hot in 2015 and 2016, coinciding with the releases of Sicario and, and Arrival, respectively. Hence why he got the job on Blade Runner 2049 and got access to a budget of $150 million. Well, that movie bombed, despite it being connected to a well-known IP, and I think it simply comes down to the fact that Denis Villeneuve is not as big of a name as Warner Brothers may have thought, you know? The success of Arrival in Sicario may have been from other, you know, extenuating circumstances that Denis Villeneuve had nothing to contribute to. You know, Denis Villeneuve may not be the next Christopher Nolan or Quentin Tarantino in the sense that his name is going to sell the movie. Oh, I'm going to go see... X or Y movie because it's the newest Christopher Nolan movie or the newest Quentin Tarantino movie. No, no, no. This may have simply been a case of Warner Brothers betting on the wrong horse. You know, they gave Denis Villeneuve the 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 keys to the kingdom to a largely unproven filmmaker, and we already saw Blade Runner 2049 was a box office bomb. So maybe Warner Brothers' decision to also release the movie on HBO Max had nothing to do with COVID, had nothing to do with the multiple delays, had nothing to do with the potential sequel, but maybe, just maybe, they're embracing for an inevitable box office bomb, and it's easier to blame a simultaneous release than coming out and admitting that you bet on the wrong horse. 
But guys, I truly want to know what you think. Why do you think Denis Villeneuve is suddenly okay with the simultaneous release of Dune in both theaters and on HBO Max? Was it because of concerns over COVID? Was it because the movie just kept getting delayed, 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 delayed? Was it because he wants the audience to campaign for a potential sequel? Or was it simply a case of Warner Brothers embracing for an inevitable box office bomb? Or another possibility, it may be a combination of all four factors. Personally, I'm not, I'm not going to rule that out. But guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here. If you stuck around this long, thanks so much for doing so. And if you guys have been following me long enough, you know I'm terrible at ending these videos. So I will just see you guys on next time.